Well, good day, good day. Welcome back. Nine Elements Ministry YouTube channel, which is probably going to be, this video will be pushed up to the uh, website, NineElementsMinistry.com. And also to choose to be sovereign.com as it does discuss the um, World Economic Forum. This is the second one discussing the World Economic Forum for 2023 and what it is they're truly saying. It's just a speculation. So the World Economic Forum convening for its 53rd annual meeting between the 16th and 20th of January 2023. 50 years or more, it's been, well, for 50 years, it's been trucking on uh, providing space for leaders to engage in peer-to-peer -peer deliberations in spirit of, if the spirit of improving the state of the world in their view. Most of these folks are, have family money. They do not comprehend the struggles of the impoverished. They do what they do to make money, which usually entails buying businesses, leaning them out, firing a bunch of people, and selling them off. Not necessarily that they do that directly, but in order to make my business more dominant in its wheelhouse, or its, its area of expertise, eliminating the other businesses is the form of business. You eliminate the competition. So when Walmart benefits from the destruction of a mom-and-pop store, selling trinkets, little uh, gifts, little gift shops down in Florida, the tourist areas, things of that nature... That's not a big deal for Walmart. That's actually a good thing. Economic ruin for the small business owner and the impoverished or the middle class who are the business, uh, the small business owners that we see on a regular basis that do not have name brands on them such as Walmart or Amazon. So when they look at something and say, we're making a better world, they're not talking about for the impoverished. They're not talking about for the wage slaves. They're not talking about the slaves that, that work for them. They're creating AI. Pretty soon journalism is going to be out the freaking window, controlled by AI. Pretty soon... Robots are going to take over every aspect of business. They can work 24 hours a day. They can work the assembly line without bitching and complaining. They don't have any sick days. Right? As long as, as, long as the assembly line is running and the power is on, they continue to work. They do have regular maintenance to be done. But if they're down for two or three hours, it's not that big of a deal. Rewrite some code and put them back out on the line. Oh, if they notice that this motor needs to be replaced, they replace the motor in the arm or the, the shoulder or the, the leg joint or whatever it is that they need to replace. I'm sure they're probably going to have robots for that as well. It would be more, uh, more efficient, faster, non-complaining. There's no unions, right? I buy a, a, a robot unit for $50,000, right? And that unit is guaranteed for 10 years. And I paid $50,000 for 10 years. How many, how many workers do I have to worry about coming in? Maybe they're smoking pot. Maybe they're, they screwed up the assembly line. Maybe they uh, are sick, right? Maybe they uh, uh, have a family emergency and they have to stop in the middle of the workday. I don't have anybody to, to take up that spot. All that is gone with the advent of, of a robot to take over. What is your field going to be? What is your idea of creating and making money? Now they're talking about this because, you know, it's going to allow people to, what did he say last year? 
own nothing and be happy. They said that the World Economic Forum last year came out and said that you will own nothing and you will be happy. Without elaborating on that. So how is that possible? How is it? Because for me, for this channel, it's, it's finding your happiness. How is it that me not owning anything, how is that in particular going to give me happiness? An external thing of not having anything, right? How is that going to make me happy without any elaboration other than that? That's a huge question. So why is it that you're going to dictate what my happiness is about? That's an external source for happiness. I do not have the freedom because I don't own anything, right? If I want to go down to the store to get some broccoli, I can't do it because I don't own my car. Maybe that it's somebody else is using it at the time because it doesn't belong to me. Or maybe I'm just renting it, paying taxes. A tax, by definition, is a forced gift or a contribution imposed. Right? That's what the definition of tax is. Go look it up. You got the internet? You pause this video? I freaking dare you. Definition of a tax. It's a contribution imposed. A contribution is a gift. Imposition or imposed means to be forced to do something. I don't like tax. That's not a part of freedom. It's not a part of liberty. Me getting in my so-called car and going wherever, whenever I want to is a part of liberty. Now, when the World Economic Forum and all these folks, they say climate change is a big deal, but they fly to Davos in their private jets. They get out of their jet and they step into a Rolls Royce and they go up to the hotel where they're talking about like-minded stuff. Now, what kind of party is that? That's not one of those uh, pot parties where you sit around drinking beer or smoking weed or both. It's not that kind of a party. It's a cocktail party. We have to be prim and proper and put on a face that's not yours to be somebody else in order to fit into the location. Which could be said about the other parties as well, smoking pot and, and drinking beer or other alcoholic beverages or doing some other type of, of uh, uh, mind-altering narcotics and depressants, whichever way you want to go today. Looking for happiness in an external way by dressing up after a fashion, by putting on makeup after a fashion, by wearing a certain high heel after a fashion, getting the proper bags, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, rolling up in a Rolls Royce that's brand new or one that's 50 years old that they only still have one or two made. Things that cost money or material items that show some sort of status is not happiness. It is an external grasp at trying to fit in somewhere where you know that you don't. Because if you knew that you fit in, you wouldn't need all that crap. The Creator, or God, made you perfect just the way you are. And then you had to go and fucking fix that. Because apparently you know better than the Creator does about where perfection is. Because some human told you something someday, somewhere. Your mom, dad, grandma. Beauty is pain, baby. Get used to it. You have to lurk a certain way in order to get a good man. Or woman. Or 
I could say binary or whatever the 25 million different genders are today. Confusion. I will not support your mental delusions. So I will generally say man and woman. That's what, well, creation says. If you want to be something else, you're diluted. Split personality, multiple personality disorder. You may need to talk to a psychologist, psychiatrist, but not necessarily one that's in the field as it is today. Because apparently it's okay to get a sex change before you hit puberty, but it's still not okay to get a tattoo. You're confused about a few things, and in order to fit in, which is an external thing, you jump on the bandwagon of what your peers or what your authority figures tell you you need to do. If you feel confused, Billy, maybe you need to become Billy Jean. Sue your parents for a sex change because it's their fault, and they're the ones that foot your medical bills. So instead of trying to figure out why you want a sex change, we're just going to do it for you. Instead of delving into why you're in a mental state where you believe that you truly are a female, or whether or not you just want to become a female because you're an athlete that's a man that cannot compete against other men, so you go ahead and change your gender, or you say that you change your gender so you can compete against women, and defeat them. Everyone knows that there are differences between men and women. It's chromosome related, period. Not what you look like. Not what you've been converted to. Not what you some pill that you have taken to alter your DNA to have operations to change the way that you look or the way that you feel because it's a desperate attempt to change the way you feel and the way that others see you so you can attack them by standing on a platform that is absolutely not for you it's for the narrative through the World Economic Forum and everybody else the fate of humanity is coming to an interesting point where delusion is perfectly okay. Because make no mistake, people are diluted. But others that are not diluted are coming to that realization pretty quick and they know where it's coming from. They know where the delusion direction is coming from. Is it Klaus Schwab parroting the narrative? No, he has other people that work for him to do that for him, such as CNN and Faux News, or Fox News. I think I was right the first time. When the media companies are now controlled by six companies, every piece of media worldwide on the big names, the New York Times, the the uh, entertainment channels that most people call news, um, the TV stations that talk about the news, they all get their news from a few sources. They don't talk about everything that the world in the world that is going on. They talk about the stuff that they're supposed to talk about. They institute fear because, well, you know, I got it pretty bad, and I'm in survival mode. But at least I don't have it as bad as those people in that mine down in South America. Or those people that are mining lithium with their bare hands for my electric car in Africa. They don't talk about that, do they? You don't see that plastered up there. They talk about that girl that um, was protesting next to a coal mine and they had to freaking snatch her up because she was standing so close to the edge she was about to fall in 
because they're still operating the mine. Which is why she was standing there, so she'd get pressed by having the police officers take her away. Because that's what she knows. And she's been programmed to do that. Is that her fault? No, it's not her fault. But it is her responsibility to humanity to stand in honor. Which most people don't understand. But I must digress. As is today, the end of this video. So hit that like button if you can. Or, well, I know you can, but if you will. <coughs> Go ahead and subscribe if you like my sexy face. Happiness can be found in the smallest places. As a rose blooms, it is but temporary over the course of a couple weeks, a couple months, and then it goes away. Other flowers will bloom, so you can see that beauty in a different fashion. Look for the beauty that's all around, not just in one location. Because when you're coming from a survival mode, that one point of happiness is not enough. Because we come from greed and unhappiness and fear, we need more. And I will say that you could be greedy. Go ahead and be greedy about your happiness. Get it where you can, but not externally. At least not from another human. Find it in nature. Find it in the birds, the trees, flowers, and all the things that go along with that. I must leave you now. It's getting on 20 minutes. You have a bright day, a bright week, and a bright year.